So, with that in mind, um, again, obviously, uh, these are questions submitted by my patrons over at patreon.com slash mander. Um, and they're all really good, and I want to answer them. So, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to answer them. All right. <clears throat> First one. Uh, where do you get your inspiration? Pissing people off. Next question. In all seriousness. In all seriousness. Um, I think that, generally speaking, my inspiration comes from wanting to speak truths that I feel are often unvoiced in the community because they know people will get dogpiled for saying it. Like, shit that's just obviously true, but enough people don't believe that if you were to say it, you would you would get, like, hardcore brigaded. I literally, I literally got brigaded for weeks. For weeks! Because I said that the Imperial Aquila was based on the Reichsadler. Like, the, the Nazi eagle symbol, which it obviously is. I got... M- all of my social medias got outright, like, stalked for, for fucking... For, for weeks because of that. Saying it, even just saying it, got me, like, quote-unquote, cancelled, I guess, by, like, the right definition of cancelling anyway, which is people saying mean things to you on the internet. That's where I get my inspiration. Wanting to um, say things that I think a lot of other people are afraid to say. These next questions are from Gecko551. Gecko! Sign off and chat! Gecko is like one of the most um one of one of my most enthusiastic supporters, honestly. They they come out to everything. Like everything. It's it's kind of it's kind of insane. And and super glad that they asked the questions they did. Um because they asked some really good questions. So so uh, first one up. Uh, What got you into Warhammer in general? My life has been dominated by two primary hobbies, right? Two hobbies. Um, History and tabletop games. Well, okay, no. Three hobbies. And model kits. I've always fucking loved model kits. I've been building Gundams since I was a kid. Um... I've... uh, Though I did take, like, a a decade-long break that I've recently broken. You can you can see if you if I if I show it off a little Yeah, you can see the uh RX one of the RXs. That's that's one of that's one of the RXs. That's 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 yeah. That's from V Gundam, I think. This trifecta of hobbies of history, specifically military history, um tabletop gaming, specifically tabletop role playing and uh, model kit building all intersected in this kind of perfect way with Warhammer, right? Warhammer's lore is full of, of historical references, um, references to real world cultures. Um, most of most Imperial Guard regiments are based on like like real actual armies in, in our own real world. I liked how a lot of the lore for the game was rooted in a very sort of like an understanding of the dy- of the power dynamics present throughout all of human history, in my opinion, at least, right? You know, religion and dictators. Those are the two primary like like power structures that have existed throughout all of human history. And I think what 40k does really well is it looks at that and it kind of goes, what does that say about humans? Like, what does it say about the human, the human race that our entire history is defined by despots and by religious figures and religious figures that turn into despots or vice versa? And, and I think from that regard, it is super interesting as a sort of historical analysis, right? 
or like a lens through which you can make historical analyses, I guess. I don't know. And then obviously tabletop gaming, it is a tabletop game. It, it slots very easily into that. And model kit building, again, you build models for the game. So like all of my hobbies, like all of my hobbies throughout my life are in some way present in, in Warhammer 40k. Or just Warhammer in general. Wargaming in general, actually. Let's let's say that. Uh, what got you into 30k slash 40k in specific? Well, personally, the thing that got me into 40k um, was actually Warhammer 40k Space Marine. <laughs> uh, that was like one of the first real like Warhammer things I ever ran into. Um, the game came out when I was like 10 or 11 years old. Um, and, and that's, that's how long ago the, um, <laughs> that's how long ago the, the PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360 came out, by the way, that, uh, I was around 11 or 10 years old when they were the current consoles, and now I'm old enough to vote, get drafted, and have a beer. That's fucking nuts. That's nuts! That was what got me in. That was that was the thing that got my foot in the door was was 40k playing 40k Space Marine as a kid, um, and then I went back. I played Dawn of War. I played all the other games, and I really enjoyed the lore for a while. Uh, but then uh, I got into the model side of things, and I ended up enjoying that even more. And the rest is history. What got you to start a YouTube channel? Okay, so again, kind of showing my age here, kind of, kind of showing my age here. I have, I have grown up watching YouTube. Like, like I grew up watching very early YouTube. I grew up watching Tobuscus. I grew up watching Smosh. I grew up watching, fuck, I was even kind of there for like Fred. Ugh. Ugh. Yeah, I know, like Fred and Equals 3, I was kind of there for that. Um, and, and then that kind of led me to watching a lot of the early game reviewers like AVGN and, and early JonTron and Peanut Butter Gamer, Kadikaris. I could, I could list names forever of game reviewers, video essayists, or, well, what we now know as video essayists I watched when I was a kid, right? Um, and so I've always been, like in the sort of YouTube ecosystem, ever since I was very little. And, and I've always wanted to make content for it, and to sort of, like, like, do, like, contribute to the thing that contributed so much to my own, um, development. Um, and I just, but, but I just couldn't find, like, inspiration. Like, nothing in my life was as singularly important to me for me to be able to to dedicate the energy to make an entire YouTube channel uh, about it, right? Like how, for a very long time, Kid Icarus only reviewed PlayStation 1 and PlayStation 2 games. I couldn't do that. I really couldn't do that. Um, because I just, I just didn't have that much energy in me for any one particular thing in my life. That was until I got into 40K, right? And, and, and so I was really into 40K, and this was when I was around, like, 17, 16. Um, I, I was at the height of sort of my, my 40K enthusiasm, and, and then um, I was hesitant to participate in the community because of its very evident toxicity, you know? I, I didn't want to engage in it because I'm, I'm, I'm queer, I'm, I'm all these things, and... I'm, I'm fucking, I'm fucking Jewish, you know, and I didn't, I didn't want to deal with that, right? Um, but then, but then COVID happened, obviously, uh, and because COVID happened, I had a shitload of free time and a YouTube channel that I had done nothing but post, like, stupid little shit posts on for the better part of a decade with, like, a hundred subscribers, and it, COVID, I was like, fuck it, fine, I'll do it. I'll just make 40K videos. And I decided that what I would do is I would talk about the things 
that kept me from initially wanting to make 40k videos in the first place. That that, that wanted to that, that that made me hesitate in actually participating in the community. I wanted to target those things and say, "Hey, those are those are wrong. Those are obviously wrong. And we should be allowed to say that they are wrong." I'm now at like almost 2,000 subscribers. I've been making Warhammer 40k content for two years now, and I've loved every second of it, honestly. This, is, this has been genuinely a really life-changing thing. Aside from Salamanders, obviously, what is your favorite faction in Warhammer? So, uh, that's an interesting question. Um, so, for 40k, my other favorite faction is actually probably... Oh, God. My answer used to be Tau. But honestly, it's not anymore. I don't. I'm not as big a fan of the Tau as I used to be. And I might make a video about this, but I think the Tau are kind of a a boulevard of broken dreams, if you will. You know, just an entire an entire sandbox of unfulfilled promises and wasted potential. I don't want to just say Chaos Space Marines, because that seems too obvious. And it's also not. Okay, no. My second favorite faction, other than Salamanders, is Imperial Guard. Yep. Imperial Guard. I like the underdog feeling. I like the feeling of, like, being so overwhelmed in 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 terms of just raw strength, but being able to make up for it with a mixture of insane amounts of cunning and numbers, right? Yeah, the average Jonas. Also, wow, you're the 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 chat box is getting obscured by my fucking taskbar. But yeah, 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 exactly. The average Jonas of it all is I think is is I think the best part of it. What is your proudest video so far? Honestly, it's it's Warhammer's Gilliman problem. I mean, okay, I have to give credit to Warhammer's Nazi problem cuz Warhammer's Nazi problem started the whole thing, right? Like, that was really my big kickoff moment in terms of actually becoming a Warhammer 40k fan. Or, a Warhammer 40k content creator. But, um, I, it's it's not aged the best. Warhammer's Nazi problem has not aged the best in terms of its production value, in terms of its presentation. I would probably write that video very differently now. Um, and I think Warhammer's Gilliman problem is kind of the co- the coalescence of a ton of experimentation and a ton of improvement I've done both as a writer, as an as an editor, as a voice actor, as a networker. I got a long fang in the video. Like I I really enjoy, I really think out of all of my videos, Warhammer's Gilliman problem came together the best in the end. You know? And and, and so yes, that is um my proudest video. Which one of your models are you most proud of? I can actually answer this. I actually have it right here. I have it right here. I have it right here. Oh. And again, but... You see that? Yep. This is the model I am the most proud of. Now you may say, what the fuck? <laughs> this is a random orc boy where you just had no idea how to paint anything. Is this your proudest model? Yes. Yes, it is actually. And and the reason for that, the reason why it is my proudest model is because for a while, um... I had a very, like, defeatist attitude about Warhammer, about, like, mini painting before I got into it. Because before I painted minis, I was into Gundam. You don't really paint Gundams. I mean, you can, but you don't really do it. Like, it's not really a thing that you do. And and so I finally just did it. When I was, like, 14 years old, I painted this little guy. And it looks awful. I, I, it's, it's one of my ugliest models because it's literally my first model, but I did it 
And <laughs> I'm proud of it because I am able to say that I conquered my fear and just did it. And this model is literally like the start of the rest of my life, <laughs> mostly because of this YouTube channel, right? I keep him on my desk. I keep him on my desk always and will always forever keep him on my desk because he is one of the first, if not the first model I ever painted. And I like being able to look at it and say, you know what, even if this, even if I'm not super happy with how this specific model came out, I fucking did it. I took that step. I put paint on a goddamn mini and I called it my own. I made it my own even. And, and to me, I will never be able to replace that in my mind. It's, it's cliche, but I love it. It's cliche because it's true, right? It's cliche because it's true. Especially nowadays, painting minis, like painting your first mini is fucking scary. Because before you probably ever paint your first mini, you're probably inundated on social media by immensely talented artists, you know? And, and so you have this, like, massive expectation in your head that you will never be as good as these people. So why should you even bother? I have, I have heard so many people who refuse to get into mini painting because they don't think they will ever be as good as Duncan Rhodes. These people go into it being like, I will never be as good as these people, so why should I even bother? And I think that's wrong. I think you should just do it because you'll never know until you try. All right. Now, moving on to the questions um, from Goops McFox, otherwise known as um, Cassie Fox. How do you structure research for your videos? In other words, uh, like, I guess how – if what Cassie is asking is – fuck, that's a tongue twister – if what Cassie is asking is how I start researching videos and how I go about finding the information I actually need to find for my videos, well, that's very simple. Um, generally speaking, I'll pick a topic, uh, something normally based on my own experiences, and and from there it kind of depends. If I'm if I'm talking about a lore topic. I'll usually read a bunch of, like, Lexiconum articles and, and um, articles from different wikis, and I'll uh, read the books. I actually read, again, all of uh, Dark Imperium uh, for uh, uh, for the Killaman video. And in general, I just, I just sort of absorb the topic and talk about it with people, and bounce ideas off of other people. And if it's about something kind of like subjective, that's more like community oriented, then normally um, I also, again, just like talk about it, right? Where I'm just like, it's like, hey, do you share this experience? Like, like, does this like thing that I'm trying to talk about also reflect your material reality? What analytical techniques, mythologies, and philosophies do you use? Uh, communism. How many feral boars could you take in a fight? Um, any number between 0 and 100. If you read, what genres, authors, and styles do you like? I really like sci-fi. Specifically, obviously, well, fucking obviously, I like sci-fi, right? Uh, but no, specifically, I I like in terms of um, in terms of reading. I like what I kind of refer to. I don't know if there's an official name for it as sociological storytelling, where the main character of the story isn't necessarily the characters themselves, but rather the society they live in. The best example, in my opinion, hold on, let me let me. Let me, uh, let me grab it. Let me grab it real quick. Frank Herbert's Dune. 
Frank Herbert's Dune. Dune and Dune Messiah as well, honestly, but 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 to a much lesser extent, to a much greater extent, Dune. Dune is the best example of sociological storytelling fucking ever. Ever. And the reason why I say that, if you're wondering, is because the main character of the story, more so than Paul Atreides, is Arrakis itself. Arrakis is the main story, or is the main character. By the end of the story, you understand Arrakis as a living organism. You understand it as a being that thinks and feels and 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 understands what has been done to it and it's pissed right and and you get this insanely deep understanding of the culture of of the fremen and and honestly the fremen are also kind of the main character of dune right like the planet the, the the book takes place on is by far the actual main character of the book um so so i think that kind of answers all three permutations of the question uh sci-fi frank herbert sociological storytelling put all three together you get like the best book ever written this is amazing Read it right fucking now. Like, during the stream. You can probably, like, read the entirety of it. it, it it's actually quite a fast read. Even though it's long as shit, it's like 500 goddamn pages, it's it's still it's still a quite a short read if you just, like, speedrun through it. Because a lot of it you can just kind of, like, glance over. Outside of Warhammer properties, do you have any other favorite war games or tabletop role-playing games? <sighs> Yes. Yes. Um, in terms of uh, war games, Conquest. Conquest, Last Argument of Kings. Conquest is kind of like... Kind of like if you take Warhammer Fantasy, right? So you take Warhammer Fantasy, you remove all the bloat from it, and then you give it a big old dash of, like, Giger shit. Like, there is a ton of, like, Giger shit all over Conquest. It's super fun. It's super fun. And also, the from a gameplay perspective, it is probably my favorite full-scale army game. Um, <laughs> fucking hell. Yes, exactly. That is, that is Conquest. Absolutely. Oh, Tabletop role playing games. I I can't answer I can't answer Wrath and Glory or Soulbound. Even though Soulbound is actually my real answer. But that's a Warhammer game, so I don't know if it really counts. Um outside of Warhammer. Vampire the Masquerade. I fucking love Vampire the Masquerade. I know it it's probably funny, considering recent events, uh hearing a Warhammer 40k fan say that they are also a big fan of Vampire the Masquerade, but I promise you I have been a fan of Vampire the Masquerade for years before Hunter the Parenting, all right? I'm no poser. I'm no poser, all right? I've been in this game. I don't like I don't like D&D. Pathfinder is like I'm good on Pathfinder, but it's 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 definitely an acquired taste just because of how like combat oriented it is. Um and then like the very runner-up to that is probably, like, Shadowrun. I, I fucking love Shadowrun. It's just awful. <laughs> I love Shadowrun. It sucks. Are there any other YouTube channels you frequently watch or engage with the content? There is uh, the obvious example of Snipe and Wib. Obviously. Uh, considering they are largely responsible for the success I've seen over the last few years. However, beyond that, I also really like other old hammer creators like arbiter ian um in terms of lore channels again arbiter ian is is i think an example of a lore channel he doesn't really make hobby videos he just makes lore videos but like lore but he also talks about the game enough that i'm not sure i'd, I'd call him a lore YouTube. he's an old hammer youtuber i fucking love arbiter ian 
so you know if he ever wants to collab or anything <laughs> if he ever if he ever if he, if, if arbiter ian ever wants to collab or anything you know hey hit me up ian's like a production history retrospective lore reviewer that doesn't help me that doesn't help me at all <laughs> Oh, what kind of ch what kind of channel is Arbor Ian? All of them. Um, I also really like Oculus Imperium. Um, in terms of painting YouTubers, my favorite is probably uh, Goobertown Hobbies. I love Goobertown Hobbies because he very much focuses on 40k as being like a Zen hobby, of being something that that is therapeutic and relaxing rather than something that is like stressful and requires you to constantly exert your entire your entire being to it. You know. People call him the Bob Ross of Warhammer for a reason. If there was a new Warhammer v video game ooh, announced tomorrow, what would you be hoping to see? Um, a sequel to a pre-established series, or something new with a new fo faction focus and genre? Okay, all right, let's fucking go. I want to talk about every fucking problem I have had with the. Um, the environment of Warhammer 40k games for the last, like, 20 years. So, uh, I perfectly understand that Warhammer 40k is inherently a strategy, like, franchise. Like, it won't be able to escape being a strategy-centric thing. However, the fact that literally all we get, the fact that all we get, is, like, strategy games and now first-person shooters. I'm not a big fan of that. I'm not a big fan of how little variety there is in, um, in, in 40K. At this point, it is entirely strategy games and single-player action games. And I was, at, I'm actually okay with this, because before it was just strategy games. <laughs> you know, like, like, even with, like, f for a very long time, it was only, it was only Fire Warrior, uh, Space Marine, and Deathwing. Those were the three games. If you wanted an action-centric 40k game, you got three choices. And only one of them's good. But, but now, the, like, the monopoly, the strategy monopoly on the 40k setting has kind of been evaporated. So I want more... Variety. Chapter Master, that would actually be a fucking fantastic game. If we could get, like, a triple-A quality, like, 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 fucking, um, like, like, 40k Crusader Kings, basically, I'd love that. I'd love that. I'd play the shit out of that game, dude. But, mm, I think, I think more importantly, I think more importantly... Um, we need more forays into competitive online games for 40k. Um, I, I, I would love more games in the 40k universe that have as good of a, um, that have as good of a multiplayer as Space Marine did. Because it's Eternal Crusade sucked. Eternal Crusade sucked from the very beginning. That wasn't like, oh, it went downhill after a while. No, it, it, it started sucking and then got worse. Like, it just got worse, right? Um, so I'd love, like, I don't know, a, a fucking 40k Counter-Strike game. We were talking about that before, actually. Uh, uh, Warhammer 40,000 Kill Team. And it's like... Counter Strike, but set in 40k, and it's like Imperial Guard versus Gene Stealer Cult or something. Um, other than that, I want a Dawn of War 4. And I know that sounds. I know that's like typical, right? But Dawn of War 3 was good. Fuck you. If you didn't like Dawn of War 3, you're perfectly valid in your opinions. However, I think Dawn of War 3 had a ton of potential. If it just had, like, an expansion pack, like, even a single expansion, it could have become the best Dawn of War game, right? I, I, I think that is the truth. I think that is God's truth on this matter. Um, and the fact that Relic and Games Workshop pull out of it, pulled out of it so quickly is, is, a, is, is disappointing. 
is, is just so disappointing. Because as soon as it didn't, as, like, basically as soon as it didn't immediately, like, like, top all the fucking sales ch- charts, as soon as there was any kind of, like, negative reception of the game, they just bailed. No expansion. Cancelled the expansion. They actually said they planned on adding more factions to the game. And there are assets for them. There are already assets for them in the game. There's already Guardsman assets. Like, like people have actually made mods to put Imperial Guard in the game because there are already enough assets in the game to make an Imperial Guard faction. But they just abandoned it. And I don't know why. It just sucks. It just sucks, man. It just sucks. A Deathwatch X com game would actually be sick too, Zadaku. I agree with that. I think that'd be sick. That'd be my, that'd be like my runner up, I think. Okay. Do you have any favorite books of Black Library's 30k line? That's an easy one. Horus Rising by Dan Abnett. Horus Rising by Dan fucking Abnett is literally, like, 300 times better than anything else in, in, the, in the Horus Heresy novel series. Like, most Horus Heresy novels are, like, a 6 or a 5. And then there are some that are, like, definitely, like, a 2. But, and, and then there's, like, the fucking Siege of Terra series, which is just terrible. Fucking god-awful. Um, but anything with Dan Abnett's name on it, specifically Horus Rising, is, like, the best shit ever. In fact, I think, I'll go even farther, I think Horus Rising is my favorite fucking 30k or 40k book. I think this is my favorite one. It's just good. What are your opinions on the Leagues of Votan as 40k's newest faction? I'm going to get hate for this. Or maybe I won't. Maybe this is a lukewarm take. They are the greatest breath of fresh air that 40k could have possibly had, in my opinion. You know? They're not Imperium. But they're not... They're not anti-Imperium either. Basically, all of my issues with the way uh, the setting writes humans, where you're either a zealous worshiper of the Imperium, or you're a brainwashed cultist, get solved. Get solved with with, uh, Leagues of Votan. Because Leagues of Votan are are squats. They're they're humans. They're abhumans, specifically. I, I know they're technically clones, but if you know the lore... They're clones based on human DNA. Like, they're they're genetically modified human clones. They're, they're the men of stone from the, the Dark Age of Technology, you know? And, and I think they are the greatest breath of fresh air that we could have possibly gotten. Because they're not space marines. Which, God, fuck, oh my god. I was thinking... If they were going to add a new faction, I I set it up and down. I said, if they're going to add a new faction to 40k, it's going to be another goddamn Space Marine faction. But it wasn't, and I'm actually really glad that it wasn't, because it's really fucking cool, you know? And and I actually have um, something of a Leagues of Votan army cooking up, but it's going to have a little bit of a twist. You're going to see it over time, over the painting logs, because, you know, I post everything I paint there, but, you know going to have a little bit of a twist to it. Do you think Darktide has or will have the potential longevity of Vermintide? No. <laughs> no, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. No. No. It, it, it just doesn't. It does not. <laughs> nope! <laughs> there is no way in hell. There is no fucking way in hell. I I will actually do I will actually do another 24 hour live stream if Darktide ends up outliving Vermintide 2. Sure. 
Dark Tide is in a setting that a lot more people are a lot more familiar with. Um, it it has a much more common like like I guess like I guess standard gameplay formula because uh, it's mostly guns. So it's a lot more. It's a lot closer to Left 4 Dead than the original Vermintide. But I don't think it's nearly charming enough. It's like if you took Vermintide or like like Dark Tide is like if you took all the fucking soul out of Vermintide 2. Like if you if you took all the charm and the soul and the humor and the things that made Vermintide as fucking ascendantly good as it was and you just you just sucked it out. You got Dark Tide. That's that's just my frank opinion about the game. And because of that, I don't think it'll it'll have nearly as much longevity. It might have a higher peak. It might have a higher peak player base than Vermintide, but I don't think it'll last as long. What are your favorite units in each of the armies you play, and why? Okay. <laughs> this is gonna... <laughs> Fuck. This is going to take a lot of explaining. Don't worry. Don't worry. Don't worry. I won't take super long. Space Marines. My favorite unit in the Space Marine model line is actually, actually, the standard tactical squad Marine. I I fucking love tactical marines. They're not good. They're they're awful, in fact, but I love them. I love them. Because never in 40K's history have you had such a versatile kit. Like literally, if you get a box of tactical marines, you could turn that box of tactical marines into basically any other firstborn infantry unit. Like, literally, <laughs> you could turn them into fucking, like, Stern Guard veterans with just a different paint job, you know? You could turn them into, um, like, 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 not only that, if you have a bunch of extra bits from the Tactical Squad kit, because that kit does come with a lot of extra, with a lot of, like, spare bits in it, then you can use them on basically any unit. Primaris or otherwise. First fucking or, or, or firstborn or otherwise. You know, you can use them on Primaris Marines. You can use them on your captain. You can really spruce up your captain with um with with the extra decoration bits from the sergeant. In fact, you kinda need to do that now if you want to run a firstborn captain, because they don't sell firstborn captain models anymore, so you have to kit bash your own fucking games workshop but that's my favorite space marine unit um mm, what's my other favorite my favorite unit from the custodies which is the other army I play uh in in 40k at least is actually and you're gonna be a little surprised it's not actually a custodies at all It's, it's 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 the vigilators. I love vigilators so much. They they're like one of my favorite things ever. I take them in all of my armies. You know? Like I actually take vigilators in basically every army. Um because well, from a gameplay perspective, they're so cheap as an elite's choice that they will basically always trade up. Right, like no matter what, if you charge into something, they will make their points back. They'll die immediately after, but they'll make their points back. And also, from like a vibes perspective, I love the idea of of just a regular human. Again, it's we're back to like the underdog thing. A completely unaugmented regular human striding into battle, not even wearing power armor. Sisters of Silence don't wear power armor. They're, they don't have power packs. They're not wearing power armor. They're just wearing, like, regular plate armor. 
but but like not wearing power armor, not augmented in any way, not really special in any way, right? In the 41st millennium, with only a great sword, and you're still regularly performing on par with demigods, the nigh unstoppable killing machines of the custodies. That's just fucking cool. Like, is that not just fucking cool? Like, you have such such chutzpah, such such conviction that you can stride into battle with nothing but a breastplate and f- a fucking big sword and rely and know that you'll be able to reliably kill anything on that battlefield. That's fucking sick. That's goddamn sick. I love that. Does help giving the enemy the the enemy the headache of a lifetime though? Actually, mm, mm, mm. for me, it's Terminators and Dreadnoughts. I I had no idea you were gonna say that. <laughs> I had no idea you were gonna say that. I am caught by surprise. No, I'm just fucking with you. I'm just I'm just fucking with you. Mm. The most holy box of bits. Goddamn, Gecko. You weren't kidding. Fuck. Favorite Loyalist Legion besides Salamanders and Traitor Legion. Besides Salamanders. I... Mm, this is hard. This is hard. Specifically the Loyalist part. But... I gotta admit... <laughs> I gotta admit... Over time... I've been becoming something of an ultramarine stan. No, I know. I know. I know. I know. I know. I know. Okay, I know. I know. Basic bitch alert, right? Like, I I know. I understand. It's like the pumpkin spice latte of fucking space marines. I know. I understand. For me... The thing that makes Ultramarines cool, more cool in my opinion than almost any other Loyalist Legion, except maybe the Dark Angels. The Dark... Okay. Okay. No, no, no. No, no, no. Fuck. This is what I mean. It's so hard. All the Loyalist Legions are so goddamn cool. No. Okay. 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 Let let me rephrase. It's a three-way tie. It's a three-way tie between the Ultramarines, the Dark Angels, and the White Scars. It's a three-way tie between those three. With, With Dark Angels... Kind of in a in a in a in a dead last, a dead last of the tie, I guess. I don't know. Like like, it's 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 ultramarines are so goddamn cool. They're like actually trying to build an empire. They're like actually trying to build a society that functions beyond just the like destruction and hate and evil of the Imperium. Though they are also evil as fuck. Don't get me wrong. And then you have the Dark Angels, where they're like... <laughs> Honestly, I kind of just like the Dark Angels because of how fucking stupid they are. <laughs> like, like they're so, they're so worried about being found out, about being discovered, for having this big, dark secret. <laughs> that is literally the secret every other Legion has. Which is that some of their tra- tra- traitors... Or that some of their Astartes went traitor during the heresy. That's it. That's what the Fallen are. They're just traitor dark angels. And they're like pressed about it. Like it's a big deal. When every fucking chapter has fucking heretics, right? Like, ah, uh, It's more a pride thing. Well, I mean it is, but... Like, it also, the pride, the pride is what blinds them from not being able to realize that it's not at all a big fucking deal that some of their, um, that, that some of their members went traitor during the heresy. And then there's the White Scars. Personally, my favorite thing about the White Scars is that no one really knows what the fuck's going on with them. I like that a lot, (laughs) you know? 
uh, specifically during the Horus Heresy, uh, when the Horus Heresy broke out, they were on the very fringes of the known galaxy. They weren't involved at all. No, nobody knew what side they were gonna take. They're they're also one of the one of the nice guy legions, along with like the Salamanders. Um, they're just these enigmas. They're these like weirdly civilized or like weirdly like sophisticated barbaric rage machines but they're but they also have this like culture that focuses very heavily on like art and self-fulfillment um and and no one ever really knows whose side they're on in any given conflict because they're so wholly dedicated to their own like self that they just don't care they don't care about the rest of the Imperium. They're not they're they're not exactly like the most enthusiastic participants in the Imperium's genocide either. You know, they they um they helped Magnus uh build the the librarium and they were one of the greatest defenders of the usage of psychers inside Space Marine Legions. And and so like all this other shit like existed. And it was super fucking cool. Um, but yeah, no, that's that's why. Uh, so yeah, that's it. Ultramarines, Dark Angels, White Scars, and then for Traitor Legion, that's a lot more easier. It's 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 the Thousand Sons. I'm sorry, it's the Thousand Sons. I love Magnus. I love Magnus so goddamn much. <laughs> he is probably my second favorite Primarch. Maybe my f- mm, no second favorite. Very close second, though. I fucking love the Thousand Sons. I love... I love how tragic they are. Um, how does one escape the bottomless void? You don't. And thus ends the Q&A segment! Mwahaa! <laughs> 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 <laughs>